Hey YouTube, happy Tuesday or Wednesday depending on when the video goes up. Thought I'd have a little bit of a sit down and have a little bit of a chat. Talk about a couple of different things, a little bit, another one of the not so Sunday randoms. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but I thought today would be a good day to have one. Today is probably the first uh, real day where we earn our stereotype reputation for winter. So it's, uh, we saw it coming. The temperatures had started to move down, 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 but I think today is the first day they kind of just fell off the table. Um, so it is kind of a bit chilly, so i am uh, got the extra layers on, and hopefully you can't hear the, the space heater kind of firing some warm air at me just, try to, just to keep things a little more comfortable. But anyway, I thought I'd talk about a couple of things today. One of them is uh, the upcoming card show that I think I've made reference to in a different video. Um, kind of my plans for that. And also specifically, I'm going to uh, be submitting some cards in for PSA grading. And part of that is going to be just uh, talking about, I've actually got the cards here, so I'll go over a couple of the cards that I'm going to be doing. So first things first, uh, talking a little bit about the card show. It is the Toronto Sports Card Expo. It is um, basically a card show that happens twice a year. Uh, usually around April, late April, or late April, May, early May usually, and then now the one in uh, November is coming up. Honestly, the way I describe it is just like, think of the national, but scale it down to maybe about a tenth of the size, I don't know. They, they advertise about 400 tables, so there's definitely a couple hundred dealers for sure. Um, and then Upper Deck does its big booth there and all that, and uh, kind of my plans are to, I'm going to kind of kind of take you with me. So that's kind of my plan for this weekend is I'm going to bring this camera uh, for the kind of the end of the day recaps, but then uh, during the show I'll be trying to take some footage in with the phone. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try to intersperse the two. I haven't actually tried to do much footage, although I did do a couple of tests and I kind of figured out how to transfer some of this video from there into the laptop. So that's kind of my plan. So I'll be, uh, I'll be sporting one of these things. Uh, this is one of the old ones here. So I usually pick up the little VIP package. There isn't a lot to it, but um, when we get to it, I'll show you kind of what comes with it. It's a bunch of Ultra Pro stuff. That's really what it is, and some coupons, and also I think you can get a free pack if you go to the right booth, stuff like that. I'll, I'll kind of show you what, what swag comes in the little bag for it. Uh, it's worth the extra, though, just to be able to get in the show a little bit earlier. And honestly, uh, the, the funny thing about the lanyard, though, I will say one thing about this. So you get one of these lanyards, and I've got about two or three of these now. Uh, this is from the one from the last show. This was the May one. Um, the funny thing about this, though, is that you get this lanyard, and it says, you know, 2019 VIP and all that good stuff. But the thing is, you still get a little... Um, a little band or a little strap, you know, like when you go to concerts or whatever and they put one around your wrist. And the thing is, that's what they're actually looking for. So this, they don't even pay attention to this thing. So I don't know, I, I don't mind having them. I, I keep them around as a little mini collection. I don't understand what purpose these serve if you're not going to actually acknowledge this thing as, you know, your pass for the show. If it's going to be the little wristband thing anyway, I, I don't see the point of that, but... That's another conversation for another day. Uh, long story short, uh, I picked up that VIP package just so that I could get in a little sooner, and it makes life a little easier going back and forth. So as I mentioned, one of the big things that I'm looking forward to and one of the big reasons that I like going to the show is I actually like, uh, I like hanging out at the show with a lot of folks because it's very similar to what I saw in a lot of the videos that you, you guys made with The National, is it's really about kind of the relationships and the people that you talk to. Well, in this case at this show, um, like I said, think of The National scaled down, but it, with a super, super hockey emphasis. It is Canada. So we're, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with hockey. But I know a lot of those dealers from a long time, and uh, and usually I'll kind of hang around a couple of the booths and kind of sit there and we'll just chill and chat. And then usually at the end of the day, I'll kind of help out a little bit with a little bit of the cleanup, and then we, we'll, go to the, we'll go to the bar to have, a, to have a couple of drinks and just hang out. And really that's kind of the fun part of it. The cards are, the cards are there certainly, and that is secondary. Uh, and this show I think is going to be a little more scaled down because um, the card budget is a little bit blown. I did switch jobs uh, last month, so one of the one of the problems with doing that is you're going from being uh, for me, I'm going from a full time employee to being a independent contractor. Uh, there is actually more money to it, which is good. That's part of the reason why I took the role. But at the same time, uh, when you're doing invoicing, you will get paid eventually. It takes I think about 30 days. So whatever money I earned in October won't come in until the end of November. And then the stuff in November won't come in until the end of December. And that little lag time creates a little bit of fun when you're trying to budget when uh, the bills are still coming in at the same rate. The mortgage uh, payment is due every two weeks just the same as it was before when you were getting paid every two weeks. But uh, that's made things interesting the last little while and the card budget has suffered as a result. So, But we'll, we'll get things back on track I think in December once the payments start coming in more regularly that's going to help. Um, like I said, at the card show, one of the things that I wanted to do in addition to hanging out and meeting the people is um, 
I'm going to what's uh, called PSA Canada. It's uh, one of the booths there, Plan and Promotions. Uh, they actually do uh, grading. Uh, they'll take in uh, different, they do bulk grading for, for folks. And it's nice because you have a flat grading fee. So for them, it's going to be like, there's different ones there. And hopefully you can read that a little bit. It'll give you kind of an idea. So mainly a lot of the cards I send in are in this tier, the $1 to $99 tier. And that's 8 US. So um, that kind of brings me actually to uh, one of the videos I, I saw, a recent one from uh, Bald Rhino. And I got a bit of a kick out of it because he had a little rant at the end uh, pertaining to uh, t taxes. And um, I do agree generally with what he was saying because no one likes paying taxes. But I always get a little bit, I always have a little bit of a chuckle when I listen to, uh, when I listen to folks complain about taxes, especially in the U.S. And they talk about 5, 6, or 7%. And um, I think I have one here and I, I, want, I want to show you. So uh, one of the things that they do is that you can get... Uh, They'll give you a bunch of these, uh, the PSA, uh, the slips, the forms, uh, to fill out. So probably in the next day or two, I'll, f I'll start filling one of these out ahead of time. Uh, this one's already been made up for this PSA plan and promotions, just to make life easier. Uh, these guys are based on Nova Scotia, which is out on the east coast of Canada. Uh, and they actually do really good work. I've, I've worked with them before on previous shows, so my last submissions, uh, PSA submissions video, uh, I, I get it through them. So basically I deliver the cards, uh, we take a look at everything to make sure it's all good, and then they go and take it back to Nova Scotia, then they go and submit it to PSA, it gets back to Nova Scotia, and then it gets shipped back to me. Um, so I've got one of these that, uh, that covers all the different things. But if you take a look here, hopefully you can see it, I'm gonna try to zoom in on this, but they got a little sticker on there that's specifically to them, so hopefully that focuses, there you go. So, you know, that's where they're based out of, uh, their information and all that. But if you pay attention to it, what happens is after I add up all the grading fees and do everything, I got to tack on their uh, harmonized sales tax, which is 15%. So it means on top of everything else, the way it's going to break down is however many cards I grade, and I'll show you here in a second what I'm talking about. So take all the cards. So these are all under 100 bucks, so they fall under that category. So it's 8 bucks US. So it's multiplied by all the cards you have. Then tack on 15%. Then, don't forget, oh, sorry, before you tack on the 15%, I almost forgot, you have to include the shipping. So the shipping for, uh, I think I got under 20 items, so for Canada, it's going to be 50 bucks with the insurance covered. So take all the cards, add 50 bucks, uh, all US, then tack on 15%, and then after you're done that, then don't forget that this is US dollars and we're in Canada, so tack on about 32, 33% for the exchange rate. And that's what you pay. So that's why when I listen to five or six or seven percent, I, I kind of chuckle. It's like, if only it was that little. The worst part is that um, Nova Scotia actually has a higher sales tax than Ontario, where I am. We used to have 15%, and now it's down to 13%. Big savings. And um, I'm going to resist the urge, but at some point in a different video, I do want to take a little conversation about eBay's uh, global shipping program. Because we get to eat the... Uh, when we pay duty, we get to eat that 13%, again, for the wonderful service that eBay provides us for that global shipping program. But I'll save that rant for another day. Even though it's a rambling video, I, I'm only willing to go so far. So enough uh, enough of my blathering. Uh, let's let's take a look at a couple of the cards that I have. So my theory and my... Sorry, not my theory. My theme on this one is going to be mostly focusing on PC stuff. Um, but a lot of these cards, like I said, all of these cards would tend to be a little bit of the less expensive category. But a lot of these are going to end up in my PC anyway, so that's part of the theory behind it. And what I'm going to do. So first one here is uh, 2005 tops total uh, Aaron Rodgers rookie card. So the Packers are playing reasonably well this year, although I think their record is a little deceiving. Um, this card, I don't think I don't think the centering is quite good enough to get a 10, but I'm not too worried about that. This one is going to be a PC card, so if I get a nine, that's great. Uh, really, it's just this one's just to go into the collection. Uh, this one, I'm undecided about what I want to do with it yet, but um, I, I kind of want to send it in for grading anyway. So this is from uh, the National. This is the Panini set that came out with the National. And this is a Lamar Jackson uh, from his uh, time with the, the Louisville Cardinals. So it's a really cool looking card. If you like your shine, like this thing is actually pretty sweet. It actually looks pretty crisp. I kind of like it. I don't know if it's good enough to get a 10, but the thing is, uh, you know, I, I figure I'll take a shot at it. I don't think I'm going to keep this one in the long run. If it does well, that'd be great. But obviously, Lamar Jackson is playing really well, and this is the only numbered uh, card of his that I have from his rookie year. So I figured I'd send it in and, t and take a shot at it. I'm not too worried about it. If it doesn't work out, it's all good. But at the same time, like it is a really nice card, and I figure it'll look good in the holder. So that's uh, no complaints there, and we'll take a shot at it. So this guy here has done very well, obviously, this past year, winning a World Series with the Nationals. So I got a Topps Chrome of uh, Juan Soto. 
The Topps Chromes 10 degrade pretty well, so I genuinely don't know. I don't expect a 10, but I wouldn't be shocked if it came back one. But if it comes back a 9, again, I'm not really shocked. It's a nice looking card, though. And again, in the same vein as kind of the Lamar Jackson, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might hang on to it for a while if it comes back really well, because, uh, you know, the World Series is going to help, certainly. But at the same time, Juan Soto is a really good young hitter, and uh, he does have a lot of potential. Now, these ones are probably for all for the PC here. So we got some uh, Vladimir Guerrero Juniors here. Just going to tilt it so I don't get too much of the reflection there. This is kind of cool. I like this. This is one of the cracked ice, I think. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out some of these parallels before I fill in that PSA form. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I really like the shine on this one. It is a cool looking card. And that's going to be a nice one. Again, a lot for a lot of these, they, they're going to end up being basically in glorified... Basically, the PSA holder will be a glorified holder. So, if that's not worth it to you for eight or nine or ten bucks, then certainly makes perfect sense to me. But like I said, a lot of these are going to end up in the collection, so I'm good with that. So there you go. You got your flagship, you know, Topps uh, rookie card, Guerrero. Got to have one of those in there. Hopefully, it'll do well. I'm not sure about that one. So this one's kind of a spoiler to pickups, but I don't think there's going to be a pickup video this week, so it'll be. So you got your, uh, I, th I think it's Walmart exclusive. So there's your holiday one. So I don't really have access to be able to crack open one of these, but I picked up one of these on eBay uh, as part of a Blue Jays team lot. So again, with the shipping being the way that it is, uh, you got to take advantage of it where you can. So if I'm going to buy a couple of cards, then it'll save me a little bit of shipping. So it is kind of a Jays team set. So it also came with a Trent Thornton. There we go. To get a little focus in there. Uh, Justin Smoke. And uh, Calvin Biggio. I believe that's his rookie as well. I believe this is a rookie year. I'm not sure. That's nice. Calvin Biggio is a nice little bonus as well in there. And he played well in his rookie year. Average was a bit low, but he's a rookie, so what are you going to do? Uh, so Topps Chrome rookie. Again, for Vladdy Guerrero. So the next couple are all Vladdy Guerreros as well. Again, the Chromes are usually pretty nice. We'll see. A couple of these, uh, I'm hoping that a couple of these do all right. But again, I'm not too worried about it. I'm probably going to hang on to them. You got the... Uh, Reverse negative refractor, which is just a sweet looking card. I really think the refractor technology really shows up with this one. Some of them not as much, but this one definitely does show it. It's a nice looking card. Then you got the sepia. Again, nice looking card. I like this. So a lot of the ones I'm sending in here are the refractors because some of these are really nice. I don't have any of the numbered refractors yet, but that's something I'll keep my eyes open on. Okay, so that's it for the Vladdy Juniors. And now we're into the hockey stuff. So we got a couple of those as well. So this one I like. Uh, this one is probably going to stay in the personal collection too. Uh, but it's uh, but there is a nice theme to it with it. So we got a... This is a 2005-2006. So Upper Deck Victory. It is an Alexander Ovechkin rookie. So the thing with this one is I picked this one up a little while ago. And it's a nice looking card. It looks pretty crisp. Um, the thing about this one is that... You know, I've been kind of keeping an eye on the Ovechkin cards, and this one is probably the most affordable of the Ovechkin rookies. Um, I don't remember if there's another one that qualifies, but it's definitely still well within affordability. I think you can get it for about 20 or 25 bucks. It's not, it's not bad. Maybe cheaper, uh, to be honest with you. The thing about that, though, is that Ovechkin is creeping in. Like, this season, an average season for him, he'd be in the, he'll get to 700 career goals. So it's one of those things where he's just steadily crept up into that, like, all-time category. So the thing is, at age 34, he's right there to get into the top 10 uh, all-time. And the thing is, if he gets to 700 goals this season, which is very well within his capability to do so, then it's not really beyond the, the realm of possibility that he could be in that 800-goal category within the next three seasons or so. And that'll put him right there in rarefied air. He'll be right in the top three. 802 goals makes him second all-time. I don't think Gretzky's record of almost 900 goals is in jeopardy, but the thing is, even being in that rarefied era, it's one of those things like, that's generational talent. He's the best goal scorer of the generation, so having one of those cards uh, in the collection would be uh, would be fun to have, and especially if it's a nice uh, one, because that's a good looking card there. All right, last and certainly not least, a bunch of these are now for a set that I'm working on. This is the 1960 Parker set, so all the rest of these are from that. Uh, we got a couple of the different stars and Hall of Famers that I've got. Um, this is probably the section that is going to get some of the lowest grades when it does come back. So I'll explain kind of my plan of what's going to happen with these cards after I send them in for submission. Uh, so we got first Terry Sawchuk. Pretty nice looking card. I actually like some of these. The condition on these isn't terrible, but, I, but compared to like a bunch of modern cards, I expect that the grades will be a fair bit lower. It's all good. Jean Beliveau. Again, sticking with Hall of Famers. Very nice. 
I've taken the time with this set a little bit. Uh, I haven't been, chi I've been chipping away at it a little bit here and there, and I picked some of these up recently. Um, I, I kind of want to be a little picky with the condition on this. I'm not looking for like mint copies or near mint copies, but I want ones that present well, especially since like the colors in this set are really kind of fun, and that's one of the things that drew me to it. So we got Red Kelly. Again, like, look at these colors. You know, for the, not a big Maple Leaf fan, but like, you got to admit, it looks pretty good with that red border and the uh, blue jersey. And you got, of course, the logo on the back as well. So that's one of the appealing things about these. This was in a recent mail day, a bunch of these. So you got Bobby Bond. Very nice again. And they did keep the theme consistent with a lot of these. So that's pretty sweet. Alan Stanley. So if these do well, I'd be pretty happy with it. And then we got a couple more Hall of Famers right here in the end as well. So you got Henri Richard. Very nice. A couple of Montreal Canadiens here. And then to finish it off, certainly, Maurice Richard. So at this point, I've already got like the graded Gordie Howe, Jacques Plante, uh, a couple of other ones. And I'm chipping away at the set. Uh, I've got a couple more that are going to be coming in probably in the next couple of weeks, and that'll bring me really, really close to about the halfway mark of that set. So I don't know if I'm, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be grading the entire set. I may at some point. It's only 61 cards. It's one of the things I really like about that set. It is heavy on a lot of great star players from the era, but it is, um, it is a very focused set. It doesn't have all the teams of the original six, because the tops from 60, 61 also has all the rest of them. Uh, but I will say one thing about that set is that it, I do like the design on that one a little bit more than the tops version. But when it comes to those, uh, 61 cards isn't too bad. So I figure I'll get all the star players and the Hall of Famers graded first, kind of add them to have them as part of my set, build the rest of it, and then kind of judge it from there. Because I'm still a little iffy if I if I like the the idea of paying to get the commons graded. I struggle a little bit with that. I don't see the value quite as much. But I, I'm going to think about it. It's one of those things where, like, I'd love to have the consistency of having a complete set already in the holders. But at the same time, 61 cards, even at the $8 per card, it still adds up and it gets kind of expensive. One card that I really was thinking about uh, sending in as well was uh, my 53 Tops Mail. But um, I think I'm going to save that probably for the summertime. Um, I'm already going to have a fair number, like, I don't even remember how many cards I've got here. So that's 17 cards there, and that's about $134 even before we add in the shipping and the exchange rate and all that stuff. It'll be, it'll be enough. I think, uh, it'll be enough to keep, uh, keep my wallet aching, uh, while I, especially while I wait for things to come in. So usually, uh, when I submit through those guys in Nova Scotia, it takes about a month, give or take. Uh, sometimes a little bit closer to two. So most likely, uh, when I submit these cards, it'll go it'll go back with them after the show's over, and probably I'll get them back at the end of December or sometime in early January if it follows the usual timing at the end of the year. Especially with the holidays, I expect that it'll probably be in the new year. At that time, I'll do another uh, submission reveal video, and that'll be similar to ones that I've done in the past. I don't do them all the time because I only send it in basically when the card show happens. That's part of the, the advantage of having the the show every six months is that it lets me kind of figure out what cards I want to do, and then do that. So last thing I want to talk about is I already mentioned kind of my plans for the show, but one of the things that I'm going to try to figure out is I don't know if um, I'm going to try to do the whole card show thing with kind of a vlog style and kind of take, like I said, take you with me a little bit to kind of see a little bit behind the scenes, some of the stuff that's going on, because because I, I will likely be hanging out at a couple of the dealer booths. It just depends on how timing and everything works out. But at the same time, it's um, I don't know if there's going to be enough footage for multiple videos or if it's just going to be one video that covers all the different days. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there. I'm going to be there for Friday, but I'll be there kind of late on Friday, so it'll be kind of short. It'll be a little truncated. Uh, Saturday the whole day for sure, and then probably just a, a quick cup of coffee on Sunday before calling it a day. So the show is the three days, and then uh, and then uh, then we shut it down for six months basically until next May. So I think that's it for now. I'm going to save the rant and everything related to the eBay's global shipping thing. I'll save that for another video. But um, in the meantime, thanks as always for watching. If you have any questions or anything that you want me to try to cover, uh, I'm going to try to have this video out probably, like I said, I'm going to try to have it tonight. Or if worse comes to worse, I'll put it out on Wednesday. It just depends on the timing. Um, if you have any questions or anything, it, the card show is very similar to kind of other shows that you've seen. As I said, I use the example of the National just because... 
This is probably one of the bigger card shows in Canada. So conceptually, it's kind of our version of the national, but as I said, it's very hockey centric. There is going to be some baseball. There is going to be some basketball and some football, but it is mostly focused on it. Um, as far as my plans for the show itself, like I said, my card funds are a little drained, so I'm not going to go too crazy. But I think for the most part, um, I'm going to keep my eyes open for anything for that Parker set. I want to check that out. I'll try to add a couple more to that collection. So I'll bring my checklist with me. I'll keep my eye out for any Blue Jay cards or anything cool or interesting that fits in there. But I'm not probably not going to add any Vladimir Guerrero Juniors because right now I'm close enough to Toronto when I go to that show that, uh, that there's a... Think of it as kind of a local team tax. It is the only uh, baseball team in Canada. So, so we get to pay a little extra if we want to buy anything from the team. Especially if it's a player who is uh, still kind of hyped up around here, even if uh, his hobby love is, you know, taking a bit of a dip since the he didn't hit it out of the park, so to speak, in the in his first season. To be honest, he may very well do very well to going in the future, but the hobby has no patience. So not hitting 30 or 40 home runs in your rookie year, now you suck. So now we'll uh, we'll see if he uh, takes any of these lessons to heart and plays better in the future season. I really don't care what he did in this past season. I'm more interested in what the future holds, and if he continues to progress, I'll be happy, especially since he's still a really young player. So I think that's all I have to say about that. Thanks, as always, as I said, for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.